part of the reason you're able to do this so well and present a map, be the yellow highlighter, is because you've gone through a whole lot of different spiritual trainings and practices. When you spoke at East West Books a couple of weeks ago, you know, there was all sorts of things I learned about you that I didn't know with Oscar Ayachazo and Erika, and then you were with Da John for a while. And Dolphrey then, John, yes. Dolphrey John, and, and then you moved on to Michael Bookbinder, and now you're with this fellow David K. Reynolds, and that seems in some ways a lot simpler, but you know, I guess the point is you, you, you did make contact with you know, some mighty enlightened gurus who had many people surrounding them and thinking that they were God in real time and you got to experience all of these different things and so it's having gone through all of these different byways and highways that you can come back with a map and say well here's some of what's out there. Yes, and in this world of pop spirituality, we wonder, the various people who write books, did they just read about, uh, did they read a few other books and then synthesize the information and then start talking about it themselves? I know some teachers who do just that. But I have had many years, uh, 30 years of some intense seeking, really 35, 40 years of intense seeking. Uh, and as I mentioned in the talk that I gave the other day, I went into some depth about the levels and the kinds of experiences I had from spiritual techniques and practices, a global heritage uh, of practices quite sophisticated and in-depth. And I found, well, with each teacher I reached a certain phase of disillusion. Now disillusion, of course, I mean freeing from illusions, freeing from the hope that this is going to do it. Uh, and I often use the analogy of, of Charlie Brown in the Peanuts cartoon where Lucy says, I'll hold the football for you this time, Charlie Brown. You can kick it, and she pulls it out of the way. Perhaps that's one higher function, intentional or not, of many different kinds of teachers where they carry us for a certain point. We take what we need, but for most of us, it's, then it's a time, there's a time to move on, uh, to get a breadth of experience. And my breadth of experience can help other people. Now, I'm aware that that proverb that says the only people who profit from other people's experiences are biographers. Mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless, in describing my own lineage, my own heritage, the different uh, the shoulders on which I stand, the different teachers with whom I've studied and gained experience, I can synthesize that in a certain way and express it in my own manner, which tends to be fairly practical and clear. So you mention a number of names which may or may not mean something to the people uh, viewing this, but uh, Oscar Richazo was a scientist mystic who uh, described uh, a global heritage of spiritual practices, and there's a whole story behind that, and that was one phase of my life. Then I spent 10 years studying with someone uh, acknowledged at, during a particular time by Ken Wilber, Alan Watts, and others uh, as one of the great spiritual heroes and adepts and masters, Da John. He's had many different names, but I know him more as that name because that's when I was in his community. And I learned a lot about working in an ashram with a guru and the traditional surrender to the divine through a, per a personage. Uh, and I learned the, the benefits and the liabilities of that in terms of uh, the loss of self-trust in communities such as that that can happen with many, thinking that is the one way to, uh, to enlightenment, to bliss, to you know, ecstasy, to whatever people are seeking.